In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, my name is Father Benedict Mackenzie. I'm from the Friars of St. Francis, a little Franciscan community uh, established in the Diocese of Parramatta. On this 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to Lord God in the Christ. highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From Rephidim, the Israelites set out again. And when they reached the wilderness of Sinai, there in the wilderness they pitched their camp. There, facing the mountain, Israel pitched camp. Moses then went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob. Declare this to the sons of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did with the Egyptians, how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. From this, you know that now, if you obey my voice and hold fast to my covenant, you of all the nations shall be my very own, for all the earth is mine. I will count you a kingdom of priests, a consecrated nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord. people, the sheep of his 
his flock, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We were still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die even for a good man. Though, of course, for someone really worthy, a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his Son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. He summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, Proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. So often today in the Western world, which regularly turns a deaf ear to the Judeo-Christian scriptures, even many Christians think with a survival of the fittest mentality that we as weak, limited human beings are not strong enough to save anyone else, that it's a matter of pragmatic necessity that I need to look out for myself as number one. But we see today that that is not imitating the wisdom of our divine teacher, who was sorry for the harassed and dejected, the sheep without a shepherd. 
A shepherd is someone who doesn't look out for himself as his first and highest priority, but looks out for the harassed and dejected. He puts himself to protect the sheep, to provide for the sheep, to be with the sheep, and to provide clarity, help, and leadership for the sheep. And that might mean a bit of sunburn, a few scars, and moments of exhaustion for himself, but the sheep will be happy, and they will be strong. And his work will mean something more than himself. It will leave more of an imprint on the world than his own self-centred wishes. Today, we see these 12 men, each an individual in their own right, and each having quite a unique personality. We see them respond, we see them embrace the vocation, the calling that God gives to them. We see them make a lifelong commitment to a life of imitating the holiness of Jesus and imitating his service of his people, his mystical bride, the church. They were not born apostles. They responded to the call of Jesus to take up that role, and they became apostles out of love for Jesus. Members of Jesus' first sheep received grace from him to stand up and become shepherds, his shepherds. The interesting thing is, we all get what they got, We're all given a vocation, a calling at the moment of our baptism. Each of us is called either to the vocation of marriage, consecrated life, or priesthood. It's like a marriage proposal from God, an invitation to a way of life from the Lord to which we can freely say yes or no. And the Lord respects our free decision. But this is the secret. Our God-given vocation is the path to our greatest happiness in this life and in the next. Our creator knows us down to our very last cell and he maps out the greatest plan of life for us. And it's inevitably a plan of generosity, focused on him, on service of his sheep, his church, and upon love for our neighbor. Dear friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, trusting in God's faithfulness and mercy, we pray for the needs of all people that the disciples of Christ in every land draw life from the blood of Jesus shed for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have left their homeland in fear receive a warm welcome at their journey's end. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who care for the sick and the dying minister with the compassion of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died inherit the life promised to them by our loving God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you are our shepherd. Accept the prayers we offer today. Strengthen us to be with those in need and help us to proclaim your love to them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Up your 
voices, the Lord is near. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Brian our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh 
everything I long to be, I lay it down at your feet. Everything I am, everything I long to be, I lay it down at your feet. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's Mass is proudly sponsored by Cath News, your daily Catholic news service. Hi, I'm Father Mark De Batista. I want to thank you for your support. Without your help, we cannot keep this ministry going. If I may be of assistance to any of you, feel free to reach out to me. May God bless you.